Time has finally run out for Eric Ten Hag at Manchester United. After the unfortunate defeat to West Ham on match day nine, which is the fourth defeat for Manchester United in the league this season, the club has decided to sack Eric Ten Hag. With Ten Hag gone, Ruben Amarim is set to become Manchester United's new manager. As announced by Fabrizio Romano, Manchester United have paid the 10 million euro exit clause for Ruben Amarim to become new manager. But who is Ruben Amarim? Why are Manchester United going all out to bring him in as manager? Well, Ruben Amarim has been flirting with becoming a Premier League manager for a while now. He was previously linked to become West Ham's manager a while ago, and since then he has been pointed towards as Pep Guardiola's potential successor at Man City when he leaves in a year or two. But, most interestingly, he was very close to becoming Liverpool's new manager when Klopp stepped down in January of this year. However, of course Liverpool eventually chose Arna Slot over him. With all these rumours, Amarim must be an excellent manager, right? Let's find out. The news of the sacking of Ten Hag was received with joy by many Manchester United fans. On Monday, October the 28th, 2024, Man United released an official statement confirming that Eric Ten Hag will not be continuing with the club. While a few fans still believed in Ten Hag, the majority were jubilant after hearing the news of his sacking. With Man United hovering in the lower half of the table, currently in and around the 14th position in the league, having only 11 points after nine games, with three wins, two draws and four losses, sacking Ten Hag was expected. The manager had lost his touch, and sincerely, it was probably best to let him go. Eight goals in 11 matches is simply too poor for the mighty Man United. When Ten Hag joined Man U in May of 2022, many thought the team's saviour had arrived. And rightly so, as at that time, Ten Hag was one of the best managers in Europe. United hired Eric Ten Hag after his excellent achievements. He won three Dutch league titles, two KNVB Cups, and also led the team to the semi-finals of the 2018-19 UEFA Champions League for the first time in over 15 years. Now, Ten Hag didn't have experience as a first-team manager in any of the top five leagues in Europe, but United believed in his football philosophy and his ability to integrate youngsters into the team. He continued his great exploits at Ajax in the 2020-21 season and 21-22 seasons, winning the Eredivisie back-to-back. -back. On 24th October 2020, Ten Hag led Ajax to an historic 13-0 victory over VVV Venlo, breaking the Eredivisie record of the biggest recorded victory in the history of the competition. Ten Hag also won the KNVB Cup in the 2020-21 season and was close to winning it again in the 21-22 season before losing the final to PSV. With his great exploits, it was hardly surprising when the board at Manchester United decided to trust him with taking their team to greater heights. The heights legendary manager Sir Alex Ferguson had taken the club to. So it was in 2022 that Ten Hag joined Manchester United. Now, although he lost his first two games in charge, becoming the first manager since John Chapman in 1921 to do so, he had a pretty good first season securing third spot in the Premier League, gaining UEFA Champions League qualification and adding another EFL Cup to United's illustrious trophy cabinet. Things, however, started falling apart for the Dutchman in his second season. In the 23-24 season, Man United exited the EFL Cup in the fourth round and finished bottom in their group in the group stage of the Champions League. They were equally poor in the Premier League, finishing in their lowest position in the Premier League since its inauguration in 92-93. They finished 8th with 60 points, losing 14 matches during the season, United's most defeats in a season. After the woeful displays, all the evidence pointed toward the exit door for Ten Hag. However, United stunned rivals and neighbours Manchester City to clinch a 13th FA Cup crown and qualify for the UEFA Europa League, which ultimately saved Ten Hag's job and earned him a new contract, to the surprise of many. 
In July 2024, Manchester United triggered the one-year extension clause on Ten Hag's contract to keep him at the club until 2026. Ten Hag started the 24-25 season without the trust of most of Manchester United's fan base, who felt that winning the FA Cup shouldn't have prevented him from being sacked. To the displeasure of many fans, the team started the 24-25 season with a loss on penalties to City rivals Manchester City in the Community Shield. So far this season, in nine league matches, Man U have lost four, drawn two and won just three. With just 11 points, United were sitting not so comfortably in 14th position, a full 12 points below league leaders and City rivals Manchester City, who are top of the league. They have been equally poor in the Europa League, winning zero matches out of three, securing just three draws and sitting in the 21st position on the Europa League table. These stats clearly show that Eric Ten Hag deserved to go. But is he as bad as the stats show or just unlucky? Guardiola thinks he's unlucky. I'm so sorry for Eric Ten Hag. This game always depends on results. We can be at risk, Guardiola said. Bruno Fernandes also urged the fans to stand with the manager and respect him, even though his last days weren't so good. Even knowing the last period hasn't been great for all of us, I hope you fans can keep with you the good things Eric has done for our club, he said. While players like Garnacho and Kobi Mainu have appreciated the manager for bringing them on, others like Sancho have been caught mocking Ten Hag upon his exit. Well, Ten Hag is now gone. So, who is next? Immediately after Ten Hag was sacked, the team released a statement that Ruud van Nistelrooy, who returned to the club in July 2024, would take over as interim manager. Regardless, Manchester United went straight into the market looking for their permanent manager and they seem to have found him. Ruben Amarim is the chosen one to take Manchester United to the great heights that Sir Alex Ferguson took them. Born in 27th of July 1985, Ruben Amarim is a Portuguese professional football manager and former football player. Amarim enjoyed spells at Belenenses, Benfica, Braga and al Wakra as a player but was forced to retire at 32 after a career-ending injury. Amarim, the player, was part of a fine Benfica team, winning three league titles in Lisbon and was good enough to make Portugal's World Cup squad in 2010. Shortly after his retirement, he joined the Lisbon Football Association in order to earn a coaching licence. In the 2018-19 season, he started working as a manager at Casa Pia. His time at Casa Pia ended after he was forced to resign with the club facing punishment because he didn't have the required licence. He then rejected a role with Benfica's B team in May 2019, opting to take Braga's job instead, where he would manage Braga's reserves in the third tier and would have a bit more control. Then, surprisingly, three months later, he replaced the dismissed Ricardo Sapinto as manager of the Braga first team on a two and a half year contract. At Braga, Amarim began showing his managerial masterclass, taking Braga from eighth to third, going unbeaten in the league and winning the Taca da Liga. After impressive displays in the short time spent at Braga, Sporting went all out for him. Sporting was so convinced of his brilliance that they paid his eight-figure buyout clause despite him only having two months of top-flight experience, making him one of the most expensive managerial hires in history. He proved that he was worth every penny paid by winning Sporting their first title in 19 years in his first full season in charge, the 21-22 season. He won the league with a national record of a 32-match unbeaten streak and was named the Primera Liga's Manager of the Year. In his second season in charge, Amarim won the Supertaca Candido de Oliveira. Sporting also qualified out of the group stage of the Champions League for the first time since 2008, before crashing out after defeat to Manchester City in the round of 16. 
on the 29th of January 2022, Amrim won his third consecutive League Cup final in a 2-1 victory against Benfica. The 22-23 season was rather disappointing for Sporting as they didn't win a trophy and finished fourth in the league. The major highlights of that season were defeating Tottenham in the Champions League group stage and beating Arsenal in the Europa League quarter-final. In the 23-24 season, Amarim won his second league title in charge of Sporting. So far, in the 24-25 season, Amrim has been great. In what was a shocking display, Sporting lost their first match of the season, the Super Cup, 4-3, despite leading the game by 3-0. Perhaps a bit of complacency? After the game, Amarim must have got onto his players and reminded them what it means to be winners, because since then, he has secured nine wins in nine games in the Primera Liga with Sporting also leading the league for most goals scored and least goals conceded. Also in the Champions League, Sporting are unbeaten, winning two matches and drawing one. So clearly, Amarim is a top manager. According to Pep Guardiola, United would be getting a high-level coach in Amarim. All I can talk about is is the experience of playing twice against Ruben's Sporting Lisbon team one or two seasons ago and the pressure was really, really good, the Spaniard told a news conference. And look at this season. He is unbeaten and winning all the games in the Portuguese League and the Champions League. They have the same points as us, so a high manager. It's not common for a 39-year-old manager to be described so passionately as Amarim has been described by many managers. What stands out for Amarim is his character, leadership, and his ability to communicate with and develop his players. As a player, Amarim was a fighter, a scrapper, and this mentality he has held on to as a manager. I am a bit like that. I identify more with the other side, more thinking about how I am going to beat the opponent and how I am going to try to make sure they do not score goals, he said. Vasco Seabra, former head coach of Estoril, Sporting's neighbours along the coast, confirmed that Amarim's teams reflect his fighting spirit. His team is really organised and fights a lot, Seabra told Sky Sports. He's always trying to improve his players too. He works with young talent, but also with experienced players. And what they all have in common is that they fight. They are really intense. One thing Manchester United will enjoy about Amarim is that he likes to bet on young players, which Manchester United have in abundance. Amarim usually plays with a line of five, described as a 3-4-3 formation in possession and 5-2-3 while defending. He places emphasis in the defence, which makes him similar to the special one, Jose Mourinho, former Manchester United manager. Amarim has described Jose Mourinho as a reference point for his managerial career. He was even said to have visited Mourinho to learn from him during his time at Manchester United in 2018. So Amarim is expected to become the manager of Manchester United any time soon now. Is he the man to take United back to the top? Time will tell. See you in the next video.